playing some more grooves. Welcome back. I'm Ryan Medora and we are talking about pull-offs and hammer-ons, kind of two sister, brother, sibling techniques. Well, well you know, hammer-ons and pull-offs, they're, they're from the same family. They're there to make your bass playing a little more funky and we're going to kind of explore the pull-off a little bit more in this video. So there's quite a few videos already about hammer-ons, an introductory pull-off video, and today we're going to kind of follow that up to, uh, you know, figure out other ways to create interesting grooves using this technique. Now, if you want to get tab notation, anything like that, please head over to my Patreon page. You'll be able to find extra goodies there. But in the meantime, we're going to go through this lesson right now. Um, so the pull-off is a technique that's primarily used in funk bass playing, but it's kind of like all across the board. And we usually kind of talk about it in conjunction with this sibling technique hammer-on because they're kind of like opposites of one another. So a hammer-on is where we use the pressure of, you know, holding an index, a note down with our index finger or our middle finger or anything like that. And we use another finger to hammer on to get a second note. A pull-off is kind of the opposite of that where we again are using our two fingers, but we kind of play the first note, we pull off and that generates the second note. So you can kind of see that these two techniques are opposite one another and they're usually used together. So one thing that we can do is uh, play in the key of E. The e is a great key for just working through a lot of funk stuff. A lot of funk tunes are in E. We have the advantage of kind of being in this middle section of the fretboard. We have our open E at our disposal. We have this middle E, our open E this octave. Um, it's just kind of like a really nice place on the fretboard to explore this technique, but you can apply this to any key, really any kind of genre of music, you know, as long as you can get away with it, do your thing. Um, but woo, it feels pretty good. Sounds like a great thing to do. So um, beginning with this, we're just going to play our root note. We're going to play the octave. We're going to pull off into our minor seventh or flat seventh. So I'm going E and then another E and then D. It's funky already, um, but now we want to think of, think about like what other notes we can bring into our bass line to make it a little bit more interesting. Now I like to kind of explore the E minor pentatonic here. So if we think about what our E minor pentatonic is, we're going to be using scale degrees root or one, our flat third or minor third, fourth, fifth, minor seventh or flat seventh, and octave. Now, some people will play this this way. And that's a great shape to use. However, one of the things about using that shape is we go and we play the root note. When we get the minor third here, we kind of automatically switch strings and we don't have another note that we're ready to play within our four fret span. So we kind of move more horizontally on the fretboard. If we get that minor third here instead, again, I'm playing a G here versus here. The cool thing is when we find that here, we have our fourth, which we can hammer on or pull off to, fourth to fifth, and then seventh to octave. So the cool thing about it is by having our minor third on the same string as our fourth, that means that we can kind of pull off or hammer on between those notes, which is a particularly useful thing in funk playing. So if you're not familiar with this minor pentatonic shape, if you only know that guy, I would highly recommend getting this one under your fingers as well. And you can kind of start that with your middle finger. You go middle, index, middle, pinky, middle, pinky, or middle, index, index pinky, index pinky, depending upon what's comfortable for you. So the benefit again of that is having that little move right there under our fingertips. So as we play this minor pentatonic scale, we can kind of play a hammer on or a pull off. Right now we're going to focus on pull offs to connect 
the notes that are a whole step away from each other. So that means that our, uh, we've got our root note. We can play our minor third and fourth. We can play our fourth and fifth. We can play our octave and minor seventh. And we have all those notes right there. You can see that they're all a whole step from each other. That's going up, so kind of like four into three, five into four, octave into flat seven. Or we could go the opposite. And that's a cool thing. So this is a great thing to practice. Root note, fourth to third, fifth to fourth, octave to seventh, and then take it down. Now, I can actually just create a groove doing this. And that's super cool. We can also make it even more awesome if we realize that, hey, this flat seventh octave I also have right here, because it's D to E. That's just the lower version of it. So I could throw that into my groove as well. And then end on my open E. That is an awesome groove. There you go. All we're doing is we're playing with our E minor pentatonic notes and then we're connecting them by pulling off, meaning we're playing a higher note into a lower note and we're only striking the higher note and we're letting the pressure of pulling off of the string to be the thing that lets the lower note sing. And again, we can kind of move this shape even lower, starting here. We can take it all the way down because we're really just playing our E minor pentatonic there, and then our lower version of that. So we've got a two octave spread of that E minor pentatonic. So this is a really great world for practicing pull-offs. You can even hammer on. You can do the same exact thing, but kind of use that sibling technique and, you know, hammer on. Then you can throw them together. First get one down at a time, and then go for the togetherness. But um, this is really, really important part of bass technique, fundamental funk bass playing, um, and it's really about being able to control the pressure that we have with both of our hands and to understand when to strike something with our plucking hand or when to let it you know, be executed by the pressure of our fretting hand. So I hope you found this lesson helpful. I hope you are able to integrate this into a groove of your own. And please check out my website, rhymeandora.com, or support my Patreon page for more goodies, tab notation, all the good stuff. So happy practicing, everybody, and keep it groovy.